capture going on now. Good evening and welcome to uh, tonight's special um, on the sofa or Monday night panel. Um, we have got three trust board members with us who are going to discuss the um, events of the past week or so. And um, then later on, we'll do our on the sofa with Gabrielle. Okay, so let's bring in Vic. Hi, Vic. Hi, Chris. A very good evening to you. Good evening. I hope, you, I hope you're well and lots I'm to discuss very well, this evening. Thank you. Yes. We have, yes. We're just waiting for the board members to um, join us. And so when they come on, we can, uh, we can make a start. Just to explain who we've got, we've got James Spencer, who, of course, is a regular on the Monday night panel. Uh, we've got Alex Pollock and we've got Stuart Willard. And there have been developments in, developments in the last few minutes. So it'll be interesting to hear what those developments are. I know Alex Pollock has been very much on board with that. So uh, we'll get them on as soon as we possibly can. We're just waiting for them to link up. And then don't forget, after seven o'clock, we'll be talking to Gabriel Zakawani. Who, who spent a brief time at Swindon Town, but my goodness me, what a career he has. And uh, is manager of Spalding at the moment. So we're very much looking forward to hearing what Gabrielle has to say a little later on. So double shift for us, Chris, tonight. It is. And I have uh, I read something very interesting about um, Gabrielle. He was in a Dizzy Rascal video. Dark. Yes. Well, yes. I was going to ask him about that because it was it was on Wikipedia, so it must be true. Hey? Oh, well, oh, gosh, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Must be, must be true. Yeah. So, right, we're still we're just waiting for them to link up. I think they've had a busy day with the uh, the court case and everything. So, I'll just uh, check where they are. Yeah, um, and don't forget if you want to leave some comments in our Facebook underneath this broadcast then please feel free to do so and we'll put as many questions as possible to the three members of the trust board who are joining us. Just to remind you, uh, James Spencer, Alex Pollock and Stuart Willard will be joining us very shortly, I hope. And uh, lots of people have joined up with not only uh, the trust uh, in the last few days, but uh, as well as the official supporters club, which is fantastic. So uh, yeah. it's wonderful. So there we are. Yeah, We're just waiting uh, for them to join fantastic. us. Yeah, I've had a busy weekend writing out membership cards and uh, sending off the uh, membership. So we've had a, a nearly 100. So that's brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. So. Very good indeed. So lots to discuss. So they're just catching up with the latest events of a court hearing, which is concluded very shortly ago. So as soon as they can join us, we'll have all the very latest details for you. So we're yeah. just waiting for them to click into their computers <laughs> and get that information across to us. Um, what else can you tell us about the Official Supporters Club, Chris? Any information you want to impart? Um, well, we're doing lots of things, um, trying to do lots of things. There's a couple of uh, things that will be re sort of uh, revealed this week, uh, one particularly tomorrow, actually. Um, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep you uh, waiting on that one. But, uh, but, yeah, something on social media tomorrow will be... Um, happening so i'm just going to bring james on hi james hi chris hi vic hi, hi james hi yeah yep yeah. we're just waiting for alex and for stuart to join us uh and then we'll get underway uh james your immediate reaction i don't know how much you've caught up with this latest hearing which has just happened i don't know if you've got any details that you can tell us but what's uh, what do you know are we live now Yes, we are live. Indeed, we are. Oh, yeah. Check. Uh, yeah, I've been on it. I've I've been listening on and off most of the day, as Alex and as Alex has largely as well. Um, he'll be joining us in a minute. Um, ultimately, what's been agreed is that the injunction has been extended. Ultimately, um, and that effectively um, allows for um, the judge to. Um, Give well, basically, give time to Axis to undertake some due diligence um, on, um, on on the kind of books and everything else, um, and ultimately um, allows everyone to kind of. It, it felt a little bit rushed today, and I'm sure Alex will kind of agree with me. And Alex was our main man on the case today. Uh, I think he's probably got um, steam coming off his keyboard. The amount of uh, minutes and notes that he was. Uh, 
typing away. But yeah, ultimately, what it what effectively means is that the um, yeah the, the the kind of everything's been kind of extended. Um, ultimately, um, we Axis are going to be doing some due diligence um, and working with Lee Power and the club on on that, um, and ultimately. Um, we're going to come back then in a, in a few, I think it's middle of May. Is that right, um, Alex, from memory? Yeah, I think the, the, probably the first and foremost important part of the case today is to, to make it very clear to, to the Swindon community and Swindon Town fans that there is actually a ban on the football club going into administration. Um, so, so that is probably first and foremost, I think, what, what people wanted to hear. And in fact, as a result of today's kind of seven hours worth of hearings it was kind of agreed upon from all parties that the administration would would be that you know kind of worst case scenario route to go so there is an injunction in that um to stop that but it's likely that the case return date will be heard probably in the third week of may um so that gives us a couple of weeks now uh for mr power and the club to follow the court orders on providing due diligence documentation to access football investments mr morfuni and Mr. Standing. Um, they have until next Friday to present all of those documents um, to Axis, and then Axis have uh, some time in play to, to effectively make a, make a formalised offer um, to Mr. Power for Swindon Town Football Club. Uh, one which Axis is in, is in kind of belief that they can better the um, present offer which is on the table from ABLE or AC uh, Sports Wiltshire LLC, which is the uh, the American vehicle uh, that has also made a, made a bid for the club. Yeah, it's very confusing, Stuart, isn't it? Because I've tried to keep my little brain around this, but you know, as, as, for people like me, word, word blindness comes right into this, and you you know, facts, figures, companies, uh, all that kind of thing. It's very difficult to follow. How difficult is it for you guys? Because of course, you now have no contact with a football club, do you? Well, that's right, Vic. It, it's incredibly difficult to follow. I mean, Alex has done a fantastic job today and James, both following the proceedings and, and, and doing their utmost to, to keep us up to date. But there's a lot of legal jargon in there that I won't pretend to, to understand all of. Um, but I think Alex has summarised it pretty well there. Essentially, Axis have now got the ability to try and match the bid for Mabel. Um administration is off the table which is fantastic news and that's you know that was the, the best result from today so the club will be sold one way or another um to either able or access and, and and that part is is to be determined yeah and i think the, i think the other Sorry, thing James, just, no i was just going to say i think the other thing that's worth adding which i think is a really important point is that the judge wants the parties involved to ultimately play nicely and coming, trying to come to some agreement. Um, he doesn't want to make a decision, ideally, on who the club should be sold to um, out of those two parties. He wants both clubs to both parties to get as much prep, due diligence, and stuff done. So ultimately, you know, they can they can kind of enter those conversations and and be a little bit more open with each other, and and, and Lee Power be a little bit more open with with Axis, and ultimately work work together and try and find the best solution for the football club which I think is a key thing. Um, the, other, the other thing I would say as well is, is that um, he did say that if they couldn't play nicely and agree amongst themselves, who would ultimately, um, you know, in terms of the offer and, and, you know, trying to come to some agreement, that if the worst comes to the worst, he would make a decision when we come back in three or four weeks' time. I think that's right, what? Alex. Is from, well, that's from... exactly what I was going to ask. Ultimately, Alex, whose decision is it? Who can yes. buy this thing? I mean, if I, you know, to name Woolworths, if I was to go into Woolworths, which doesn't exist anymore, I want to buy something. It's my decision to buy it. But from what I'm just hearing from James, it's not necessarily the, the buyers of the football club whose decision it will be to buy it. Is that fair enough? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, in, in any other context, Vic, it's, it's probably quite easy to, to put a scenario like that in play. However, the, the judge was, you know, quite keen to stress how complex this particular situation is. Ultimately, uh, Mr. Power, uh, through Swinton Reds 20 and Seabeck 87, which are two kind of holding company vehicles of the registration of Swindon Town, effectively, he is the majority, he is the majority owner as things stand and as it's delivered by Company's House. Mr. Morfuni through Axis Investment owns 15%. 
Um, ultimately, Mr. Power is, is kind of within his rights as to who he wishes to sell to. However, since 2019, there has been an injunction in place uh, by Mr. Standing to stop the sale and prevent the sale of the club to anyone without the confirmation of Mr. Standing and Mr. Morfuni. So in a normal scenario, yes, anyone who owns, owns their company or owns their football club would be within their right to sell it to whom they wish. However, in this scenario, access comes into play, Mr. Morfuni. What the judge was saying as a result of today is on the flip side of that, it can't just be the way of access football investments who say, no, we don't want you to sell to this company. We want you to accept my offer. Um, so what the judge has effectively said is, OK, let's buy ourselves a little bit of time here. There's an offer on the table from Abel. There is potentially an offer from Axis, but there needs to be a bit more due diligence. Whilst, whilst there is still some available funds within the club for operating costs, which we're you know, assuming maybe the, the next month we should be okay, let's give Axis the opportunity to either match or better Abel's deal. And then Mr. Power will have two offers of the same scenario. And he should be encouraged and potentially persuaded to go with the offer which is in the best interests of Swindon Town Football Club not in the best interest of Mr. Power himself. So it'll be interesting to see when both of those formal bids are made public, uh, what the actual implications for the directorships, how they kind of come, in, come into fruition. So, Stuart, the, the good news is, and this is from Pete, the administration is basically off the table now. There'll definitely be a sale. That, that appears to be the bottom line out of today's proceedings. Uh, and I'll get to you in a moment. Just another couple of comments that are coming in. Uh, Mark, hello to you, Mark. Uh, hats off to the Trust for the great work they're doing. Also, excellent to know that the judge appears to be sympathetic with the fans, saying how important it is to the people of Swindon. And I think, Stuart, over the last few days, I don't know what you... Can you give us an indication? I know with the official supporters club, Chris was telling us earlier how busy she's been getting <laughs> membership details sorted. Uh, how about the Trust? In, in terms of membership, um, our numbers have gone through the roof over the last few days, Vic. Yeah, it's an incredible amount of support shown by the fans um, for us. So, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're getting our membership numbers up to, you know, it's more, more than doubled in the last few days. So, you know, that's, that's, that's extremely encouraging. So we're working through those, making sure that we, you know, we, we, we've had a few questions from people. Uh, about how to sign up, and, and we're you know, we're making some changes to make it as easy as possible over the over the next few days. So just bear with us on that. But um, but yeah, it's been it's been really really encouraging the amount of support that we're getting now. Where, where do we go from here, Stuart? Because once you get that groundswell of support with you, it's important to use it, and the both supporters organisations will want to use that groundswell of support. How do you see the future with whoever owns the football club come? May, where do you see those two fitting in? Well, I, I guess it will depend on who the owners are and what their what their intentions are. But certainly, with Clem Morfuni, uh, he's he's been engaged with us on a number of occasions. Uh, he was obviously the only person to respond to our open letter, to set out his vision for the club, uh, which he's committed to involve the supporters heavily. Uh, he's committed to having. Um, members of the, of the various um, supporters group on the board uh, and, and keeping them in touch in that way. So we're extremely encouraged, in, encouraged by that. You know, that's a, that, that's the sort of level of openness and transparency that, that we're looking for. And, you know, I think under under, under Clem's, Clem Morfuni's ownership, there will be a, a huge involvement for all of those supporters groups. What I would say is is we would be prepared to work with any owner who would match that level of openness and transparency but at the moment it, it's only Clem Morfuni, Morfuni that's actually demonstrated that he would do that. Uh, James you've got a lot of comments coming in so um, who makes the decision who to sell to because we don't know who owns the other 85% of the club I mean to be honest who knows owns what at the minute I mean it's so very confusing um, that is an important uh, comment uh, this is from Lena were Abel represented in court. Uh, from Ben, I wonder whether this delays Odomayo, Twine and Payne sales. Uh, Twine's contract progress is like a brick through mud. A good description. Uh, how long would a sale take to go through? And from Jim, what is actually known about Abel? I mean, lots of comments there, James, already. And, and it just goes to show the level of confusion. 
Oh, it's, it's massively confusing. It really is. And I think as we alluded to at the beginning, you know, none of us are uh, uh, legal experts. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of experience on the trust board in numerous areas, whether it be finance and compliance and various other things. But yeah, none of us are um, <laughs> are legal experts. So we've learned a lot through this, uh, this process as well, really. Um, but I, I think, I guess to touch on a few of those points, um, I think... Uh, Access have said that they can do their due diligence fairly quickly. I think there was a question you mentioned there about how quickly can some of the process work. They've said that they only need, um, you know, once they've got the information that they've been asking for for a while from the football club, they should be able to kind of turn that due diligence around pretty quickly. You know, they said, I think, you know, a week on a maximum. Um, so that that obviously will occur. Um, I think it, it was stated that um, ABLE, are, are, they've already signed an, a, an agreement with, with Lee Power um ultimately that they're ready to go if that's the decision that's made that you know that able are the preferred person whether it be mr power or, or the judge that ends up making that decision whichever route we go down um so that's pretty much well advanced um that, that side of things um and ultimately what they're looking to do now is obviously as alex has already said and stuart's already mentioned as well you know we're trying to get access now into the same um, effectively at the same level so that a decision a like-for-like -like decision can be made basically based on apples and apples not apples and pears um, I think that's probably a good way of describing it um, one thing we also found out today was that um, had this not also been concluded the court case which we thought would be end of this year beginning of next year was actually scheduled for June 2022 so had this not had, you know we could have been waiting until um, over, well over a year so I think the fact we're kind of <laughs> we're at this point now and hopefully going to get some kind of conclusion um and, and decision in the next kind of month um is a good thing um yeah but it's it's extremely complex um really really is and um as Stuart i think mentioned a minute ago you know some of the terminology has been used you know we've uh, we've learned a few things in um <laughs> in having to look up some of this stuff ourselves and um and teach ourselves a bit of legal uh, jargon but um yeah it's um it i think um we, we are, we are comfortable as a board now that we understand where everything is. We know what the next steps are. Um, and, and, and ultimately, um, it, it, you know, I know people will ask us, where do we feel the decision's going? I think it very much depends on how the next couple of weeks goes, really, I think. But at least I believe that, you know, probably in four or five weeks' time, we should be in a better position to know where we're actually going, whether who is actually going to own that football club. Yeah, because it's important, Alex. One or two very important decisions are coming up. A, not least of which, uh, which division we'll be in. Well, I think there's a fair chance we know which one that is. Uh, who the new manager might be. Uh, and season tickets, of course. Because, you know, there is a possibility that football fans might be in stadia next season. You know, with a fair wind. A lot of decisions coming up. Yeah, absolutely. And with, with so much going on off the pitch, it's very easy to forget that there are 11 players going out twice a week to, uh, to, to compete for three points here and there. So uh, absolutely. And I think the, the, the good news is effectively by avoiding that administration, and that is 100% confirmed as things stand, that we won't be going into next season with a points deduction. Um, and we do still have the outstanding situation around um, this season's season's ticket. Um, before the trust was excommunicated by the club, we were having some minor discussions with them around what their plans were. Although at the time of excommunication, uh, there was nothing formally forthcoming. There was a reference in the recent court hearings actually as to whether the refund of season tickets was a legal obligation or potentially a moral obligation. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that's determined with regards to liabilities and monies owed. Um, but I mean, fingers crossed, you know, if we're getting into next season and, and with everything that's going on around the pandemic at the moment, cases are down. You know, I cannot wait to go back to the county ground, regardless of what, what league we're in, just to experience that, uh, that match they feel in once again. Yeah, we, we, we would so say all of us. Um, right, Stuart, lots of things coming in. Um, this is from Jim. What is actually known about Abel? Um, the, the words Boston Celtic spring to mind. And, I, I, you know, you know, as somebody with a very small brain, somebody who's interested in the Bo or owns the Boston Celtics, which is a global brand, had a Swindon town come into this. So I've got to say, you know, I mean, we know where we are in the scheme of things. So how does that work? Well, I mean, to answer the initial question, what do we know? Very little. 
I think is the honest answer. Despite all of our best efforts, we've we you know, we have yeah you know, tried to research it as much as possible, but there's just not much information out there. The Boston <laughs> Celtics link, I've I've heard that one. I I haven't had it. I haven't heard it corroborated, but apparently um, there is a link there. Maybe through maybe through a relation of of, um, of the chap who runs Able, but again, I, I'm not sure if that's been confirmed. Um, but yeah, the honest answer is, as I said, we know we know very little about the company, and 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 that's kind of yeah, you know, that's why we're not really in a position to support their bid. Yeah, you know, if, if if we'd had the level of transparency and openness that um, we've had from Clem or Fooney, then then as I said before, we would be you know we we, we would be more uh, more comfortable, and, and we are agnostic of owner. Um, you know, it's not as though uh, you know. We, we are trying to be open-minded about Abel, but there's just no information about them. Yeah. If it, yeah. if anyone's got more information than we have, then then we'd be we'd be delighted to hear from them. But uh, we we haven't we haven't come up with much so far. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that this session isn't an owner bashing session. We just want to know yeah. what's going on with our football club. Uh, and you know, I think it's very easy to come out with bashing uh, uh, statements, but we really want to know. In five years' time, there's a Swindon Town football club playing decent football in front of people at the Canterbury. That's it. That's the bottom line, isn't it? Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with this is from Paul. With American owners' behaviour at the top of the game, I can't imagine what he's referring to there. Uh, I can't see Swindon fans wanting Abel. Well, until as Stuart's just been saying, we find out more. We don't know. I mean, I have to say, James. Um, I'm trying to keep the European Super League out of this, but, you know, the heart's been ripped out of football today, hasn't it? And who knows where that's going to end. And it makes it even more valuable that we have clubs like ours, isn't it? As simple as that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I have to say, um, yeah, with the Super League side of things, it, it doesn't necessarily um, paint some of the uh, non-British owners in particularly good light, really, does it? Because I think... Um, you know, it kind of proves that, you know, a lot of them are in, in, in it for ultimately, you know, the financial side of things rather than actually for the love of football. And I think um, that that is a worry when you've got, you know, potentially people um, coming in to kind of look at purchasing a football club. And I think, you know, that's that's why we did so much due diligence on, on Clem Morfuni when when we first heard about, you know, the fact that he wanted to kind of get involved in the club and ultimately look to purchase it from, from Lee Power. Because so, I've got to say, that equally as Abel, an American company, why would an Australian get involved with yeah. Town? It's a sim simple question, isn't it? It, it absolutely is. And when, when we had a board meeting a few weeks back and actually um, Clem attended, you know, I think that was probably one of the first questions we asked him as a board, you know, why Swindon Town? And I think we probably mentioned on a, probably on a previous panel, actually, the kind of, the response he gave us and you know he has been involved with the club since kind of 2016 as a sponsor and uh, you know obviously now as a as a kind of part owner um and, and ultimately he's fallen in love with with, with spinners town football club you know he's been to away games he's sat in the town end previous occasions um you know he loves football he plays football himself over in australia um you know he's just fallen in love with the club and supporters um and ultimately, you know, we all believe, you know, his heart is is definitely in the right place and and, and, and his reasoning for getting involved potentially, you know, and, and wanting to own the club fully is 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 for all the right reasons, we believe. Um, not not for anything else. And that's where we're struggling with really with 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 kind of the able side of things, because we've not heard anything from them. We've asked for open and honest kind of feedback from them and you know, dialogue and all this kind of good stuff. Um, you know, as we did with all potential owners and not, as has already been mentioned Clem Morfini was the only one that kind of came back to us um you know provided us with lots of uh, detail and, and, and plans and strategies and things we've not had that from anyone else so we can only go we can only comment on what we've seen um and you know obviously the fact we we've had no response from from Abel is a concern um because we don't know who they are I think the only thing we found out today uh, slightly more about Abel was you know, we'd heard about this particular individual that was kind of involved, um, you know, in terms of kind of running Able, but we did also, um, you know, there was a uh, an additional name that was kind of thrown into the hat um, that, that's involved in Able as well today, which we've not heard of previously. So uh, again, we'll we'll kind of do some do some research on that uh, on that side of things to see who that individual is and you know what, what business he's in and all that kind of good stuff. But but again, it's it's us doing all of the digging rather than you know that engagement coming from. From from Abel themselves, really, which is concerning. 
Yeah, just to remind you, at the bottom of the screen, you might see uh, running along being scrolled, is how you get in touch with both the Official Supporters Club and the Trust, if you, you're interested in joining at the moment. Uh, and as we've already heard, lots of people are doing that. Uh, this is from John. Um, I'll, I'll give this one to you, Alex. Is there any vision for the supporters through the Trust to purchase a part of the club? Has there ever been? Has this ever been asked of Clem Morfuni, for instance? We know, of course, you were in negotiations uh, about the ground, um, which has been put on hold because of this current um, a container ship and the sewage situation. Uh, but what what about uh, possibly being part of the club in terms of buying part of it? Yeah, just uh, just on the county ground, actually, you know, it's been well documented that, that the Supporters Trust were going into a, a 50-50 joint venture with Swindon Town Football Club to purchase the ground from, from Swindon Borough Council. And obviously when the, you know, as much as we tried to make the deal owner agnostic, as soon as the ownership kind of details came to light, the, the Borough Council decided to kind of put those on hold. Um, as soon as we're through this kind of interim period of, of ownership challenges, you know, we hope to be able to, to bring that conversation up once more and, and progress with the deal and part of that uh, kind of ways of working around that deal was to actually try and build a closer relationship with the football club with mr power um and uh you know so that's kind of off the table as things stand at the moment with regards to fan ownership though it's it's an element we've discussed internally with the trust board and we've had a lot of interest from fans around this particular element um, Mr. Morfuni, through Axis Football Investments, has, has alluded to us that, you know, if he was to acquire the football club, he would love to have fan representation on board from both the Supporters Trust and the official Supporters Club, which is a fantastic move um, and something which we're finding, you know, become a little bit more prominent, um, particularly in lower league football teams. Um, with regards to the trust or the supporters actually acquiring a percentage of the football club, that's not a formal formal conversation that we've had yet. However, um, we've come to, to kind of build a really good relationship with Clem Morfuni over the last few years. So if there was ever that possibility of having that conversation, um, I'm 100% certain he'd, he'd be open to the idea of entertaining it. Uh, this is from Mark. Just out of interest, is there anyone out there with some legal experience to assist the trust in getting through this legal <laughs> minefield? Which I'm sure if there was, and you would appreciate that help because uh, it is pretty much of a minefield, quite right. Uh, this is from Shane Stewart. Um, how might the FA charges impact upon any sale, uh, particularly if the current owners are sanctioned heavily, possibly even banned from owning clubs? Of course, we don't know that's going to happen. That's still in due process. They've got until the 22nd of April to respond to those uh, possible charges. So what's your thought on that? In in terms of the sale, I do probably see it as a, as a separate hearing that, that shouldn't impact the sale. Um, I think the only thing that, that might come into it would, would be any possible involvement from Michael Standing. Um, but, in, but obviously, because he, uh, he, he is one of the uh, individuals that have been charged. But uh, if we assume for a moment that he wouldn't be part of the purchase and it, and it was either Axis and the Clem Morfuni or the Able Group, then I don't think the FA charge would, would affect that part of the process. Clearly, what we don't know is whether there will be any punishment beyond that to the club. Um, we have uh, written to the FA uh, and requested that if, if anyone is found guilty of, of the charges, that the punishments are, are dealt out to the to the individuals involved rather than the clubs, uh, and and that has that has had, had the support of, of both of Swindon's uh, MPs. Um, so you know we're hopeful, that we, and we've had I should say we've had a response from the FA as well, um, which was fairly non-committal as you would yeah, expect yeah. moment in time yeah. before before they've actually um, concluded their findings. Um, but but we are very hopeful that, um, as I say, should should anyone be found guilty, it's it's the individuals that are penalised rather, rather than the club. So we're just going to have to see how that one how that one pans out. But um, I don't see it having a, a bearing on on the on the ownership case. Okay, uh, right, uh, James. Do the this is from Mark Kirkman. Hello to you, Mark. Uh, do the trust have confidence ev uh, confidence evidence uh, that Axis Clem have the necessary resources to cover the significant operating loss that Swindon Town Football Club incur and also for player recruitment and stadium improvements. I, 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 I got to say this to you. Once uh, Dan McCauley, who was uh, chairman of Plymouth Argyle, said, here you are, look, I'll, buy, I'll give you the football club for three million quid. Then what do you do with it? 
because it's all very well buying a football club, but then what do you do with it? And I think that's the bottom line, yeah. isn't it? It absolutely is. I mean, the purchase price, or however, whether you take the debts on or whether you actually pay money up front, is 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 the minimal part of it, really. As you said, it's the ongoing costs. Um, I mean, some of the figures that we've heard mentioned in in in, in the cases we've been, you know, obviously listening to, uh, quite scary to be perfectly honest. Some of these, um, some of the losses and things, and some of the amount of money that's having to be pumped in to obviously keep the club afloat. Um, yeah, it's um, it's quite a worry, really. Um, going back to the original question about Ben Morfuni and, and resources, um, part of the case court case today um, centred on that actually, and in the fact that the court wanted to see evidence that you know he was um, he had the backing ultimately and the funds in order to um, to support the club kind of going forward, and he has provided um, financial uh, details to the court um, to 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 show that you know. Um, you know, there was a certain figure mentioned, but ultimately we're talking, you know, tens of millions really to to prove that he's got that kind of fluid funds, I guess, really to to support the club, and and he's provided that evidence, so that satisfied the judge today that um, you know, he's a credible um credible person to uh, ultimately come and invest in the club and be able to uh, take it forward. So, yes, so I think the answer to that question is yes. <laughs> oh, right, okay, uh, right, uh, Alex, this is true. We've got a couple on the same subject here from Lee. Uh, depending on who owns the club in the future, where does this leave Highworth training ground? And from Pete, do the guys know if the sale of the club includes or excludes the training ground in Highworth? Well, good questions. And I think with everything going on around the ownership battle specifically, it's probably the one thing we failed to clarify in the 20 minutes between uh, today's <laughs> hearing finishing and, and us coming live with you, with you guys. Um, but it is something which is on our radar to, to understand a bit more clarification around the um, the ownership and the purchase of uh, 12 Oaks over in Highworth and who specifically owns that and what they'll be in, whether that has an inclusion in the set of the football club. So unfortunately, I don't have anything more for you on that, um, but we'll keep digging. Yeah, well, fair yeah, enough. All uh, we, you yeah. know, sorry, but sorry. All, all we yeah, do on, know Stuart. on that is, is that the land is in... Um, Lee Power's personal name, um, but we don't know if it, you know, what's included as part of the, the the sale agreement. Yeah, although allegedly Michael Standing's stating that effectively he owns, you know, uh, a portion of that based on uh, based on the ranking. As you so, can tell, it's, it's always very very uh, confusing at times with with matters relating to assets of Swindon Town Football Club. Yeah, yeah, I was I was going to say, if a game of ping pong, it might sort it out, might not it? Uh, <laughs> is it correct that the Michael Standing ownership is not relevant for this particular case? That's purely an FA issue. Uh, I think we, we sort of touched on that. The, the, the Football Association hearing is kind of separate to all this, isn't it? There is, yes, yes. So the, the FA charges in relation to ownership is a, is a completely separate matter being dealt with specifically by the FA. Um, obviously, Michael Standing, through his, uh, management company has has staked a claim in 50% ownership of Swindon Town, which is why the FA charges have arisen. Um, part of today's hearing was actually, um, the case as it's known is actually Power v Standing, um, but the legal representation on behalf of Michael Standing is now also the legal representation on behalf of Axis and Mr. Morfuni. And one of the um, one of the judgments and part of the case today was actually to include Axis and uh, Michael Standing together into one combined uh, claimant part. So um, yes, yeah, so, so what was being heard today was was effectively bringing those two together on behalf of um, on behalf of one claimant party, which Stuart, again I... makes it slightly more confusing for everyone involved. Well, I was going to make it even more confusing, Stuart. Where's Gareth Barry standing in all this? <laughs> Good question. Uh, we've we've heard nothing from Gareth Barry at all. Um, so who knows? All, all we know is, is that um, yeah, he denies uh, Lee Power's claim that 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 um, he gave the, the money, the eight hundred pounds, directly to Lee Power. Uh, you know, Gareth Barry's claim is that is that he gave the money to Michael Standing. But over and above that, we we've, we've not heard anything from Gareth Barry. No, uh, no. Sorry, gone. No, I was just going to say, absolutely not. And I think yet, you know, the only it almost feels like this court case um, over the ownership really probably won't touch on Gareth Barry. I think, you know, I think the the the, the element which 
there will be some uh, investigation and obviously summarize summary on will be the, the FA um, the FA part really. So um, I think that's the only um, only element we will hear about the who decides you know who what the decision is on over Gareth Barry and his involvement and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, Alex, this is a, a sort of. I think we've already touched on this, but is it possible that any new owner could be punished by the FA for previous ownership issues? I'm guessing not. Although one possible new owner might be involved, if you see what I mean, might they? It, it, Michael Standing, I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah, it, and again, that would that would probably come down to then an investigation further and separating the FA out from from the ownership. Obviously, with Michael Standing being um, an intermediary or or an agent, he has no uh, he has no right to own or have an interest in a football club. That's totally against the the rules of of the FA and, and the football football leagues. Um, so it was interesting the other week when Michael Standing actually removed himself as a director of of his company First Touch Pro Management, um, and there was no there was no kind of real understanding as to as to why he did that and why he did that at that particular time. Um, however, what we do know is, is from the Axis investment perspective, uh, Mr. Morfuni and those involved in his business operations are not football agents, do not have any conflict of interest in relation to um, acquiring the ownership of, of the football club. Um, we know that he has uh, footballing interest in Australia. He, he sponsors a number of teams. He's been involved in, in building stadiums over there. Um, again, on the ABLE uh, side of things, very little information is known. It, it was made apparent in, in court today that um, ABLE has a number of operating companies and those holding companies at the top of the tree are involved in sports in the US, um, but the legal representation couldn't, couldn't tell us which type of sports or what the names of those sports teams were. So. Um, you, we've got no further further info on that. Okay. Um, gosh, Stuart, right. We've we got five or six minutes left. Um, just to, to say that at seven o'clock, we'll be talking to Gabriel Zakawani, who spent a very brief time at Swindon, but has got an incredible football career. And looking through some of the clubs he's played for and some of the countries he's played in. So we'll be talking to Gabriel from uh, uh, seven o'clock on, on the sofa. Uh, this is a... a a special on uh, Monday night panel talking about the events of Sydney Town Football Club. So then, Stuart, um, here we are. We've got this. Uh, we know that administration is off the table. We've got two or three weeks for this ownership to be sort of sorted out in terms of everybody do their due diligence, their cases being put forward. What's your gut feeling about the future of Sydney Town Football Club right now? I mean... Turmoil is one word I'd like to use, but, uh, it, you know, is it is it as bad as that or do you have a, a better feeling? I, I think it's slightly better than it was yesterday because administ administration has been taken off the table. So we know we're going to get new owners, which means we're not going to get a 12-point deduction going into next season. So, yeah, in that respect, if I'm, yeah, if I'm looking at it from a, from a, a glass half full angle, I think, I, think, I think it's a little bit better than it was. Clearly, we don't know who's going to end up buying the club. We just hope that that whoever it is engages with the fans, is open and transparent, and, and, and sets out their vision for the club. Yeah, that's that's. And at the moment, as I said before, in that respect, Clem Morfuni's ahead of the game. But um, but it, it, yeah, it obviously, completely beyond our control who who ends up owning the club, and 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 you know, we would hope to work with whoever whoever that uh, company is. The one thing I'd say, James, that it seems to have done the impossible in the last few days, and that's united the fan base, which at certain yeah. times you would think is kind of impossible, but it does seem to have done that, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you know, the question at the beginning about the um, the number of people that we've had sign up to the trust, absolutely unbelievable, and it's still still going strong. Um, and I think you're right. You know, the um, the Twitter handle. Um, that Dan Hunt started, <laughs> um, you know, regarding kind of, uh, you know, to non, the non Lee Power one, um, you know, everyone's got behind that one, um, you know, everyone's tweeting it, and yeah, we've got so many really, really positive emails, tweets, um, comments on various um, posts and things, you know, everyone's been very, very complimentary, and we've had so many people asking us how they can sign up, how they can help, um, which is brilliant, and I think, 
it is it is bizarre, isn't it, that in 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 uh, in such difficult circumstances, fans just pull together. Really, um, I think that's a bit of a, a British thing, to be perfectly honest. You know, when the chips are down, everyone kind of mucks in and ultimately gets behind trying to sort some you know sort things out. But I think, uh, yeah, it's it's great to see. It's really really great to see. Um, and I think um, I'm really hoping now that we can kind of get the conclusion that we want to. And I think as Stuart says, my, my view is I'm slightly more positive now, like he is, um, post post the admin being off the table. Um, if I had, you know, if I had to give a gut feeling for where I think it was going, I think it's very close. I think it will depend on, on, um, on a lot of kind of negotiations back and forth over the next few weeks. Um, um, and obviously, you know, if able to decide that, you know, that they, they want to engage and, and be more open, then we'd absolutely welcome um, talking to them and hearing their thoughts and views. But at the moment, we've not heard that. So hence why we're very much for Clem Morfini, because we, you know, we're only going on what we know, ultimately. You know, you, you can't you can't deal with something you don't know anything about, really. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we're just hoping that we get a really, really positive outcome. And it's great that the admin's off the table now, which is brilliant. OK, Alex, I'll, I'll let you have the last word. I mean, he, you know, you've been slaving through this thing all day. And, uh, you know, after this, I'm sure a glass of something, well, whatever it is, is your particular favourite tipple would be nice. But, uh, you know, how are you feeling tonight? Yeah, I think there's absolutely still so much more information we need to go through. And obviously the next few weeks are, are, are going to be really crucial um, from from a personal perspective, having sat through the hearing last week and, and sat through, you know, those seven hours today, it, it felt really critical that now is is the time for uh, Mr. Power uh, to kind of adhere to the to the court's judgment, provide that financial information, that due diligence to access investment, and also give uh, Clem Morfuni an understanding of what the deal from Abel is in place. Um, effectively, the judge has said today that because Axis and Clem Morfuni have said that they should be able to either match or better Abel's offer. Um, it's down to Mr. Power to tell Mr. Morfuni what he doesn't like about the, you know, the current offer that is on the table. So um, absolutely reiterate that, that I think we're in a much better place this evening than where we were this morning or yesterday. Um, but we're most definitely not out of the woods yet. And I just think it's important that, um, you know, as a fan base, we stick together um, and, and, you know, through vehicles like the Supporters Trust, uh, and the supporters club, we can ensure that every voice on behalf of, of Swindon Town fans is, is, is heard. And as a trust, our, our main intention is, is to secure the long-term viability of the club and to make sure the fans are represented. So if there's anything we can do to support fans or if you've got any ideas, please, um, please do get in touch. Marvellous. Um, uh, would you all come back on again once we know uh, the next court date and what they've done and and uh, who won that table tennis match. That would be really absolutely. nice. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> yeah hopefully excellent. We can, hopefully we can celebrate with something, hey? That'd be, that'd be nice. That'd be nice, yeah. Uh, rather, maybe something a bit stronger than lemon squash. I don't know, really. <laughs> Possibly, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, Chris, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed to Stuart, to Alex and to James uh, for explaining all that to us. An absolute nightmare to go through, I'm sure, but Chris, they've explained it brilliantly. So fantastic! I just want to show you guys this because I think this uh, actually sort of comes for everybody. So this is from Joe. Well done to the trust who have probably worked ridiculous long hours around their own jobs and home lives, and I, so I think that uh, speaks for everybody. So thanks ever so much for that. Um, oh, oh no, I don't want that. I don't want that one. <laughs> <laughs> Going a bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, but no, thank you. I I certainly understand it a lot more now. So uh, that's fantastic. And thank you very much for coming on so soon after you've uh, all been busy with the court case and everything. So much appreciated. Pleasure. Brilliant. Yes, okay, you. don't forget we'll be back very shortly with uh, yes. Gabrielle Zakawani. Okay. 